Insha'Allah Esmesh Rahim. Grace and peace be unto y'all. It's good to see you all this morning. Y'all looking crazy. <laughs> Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen again. God is good how often and all the time. Look at somebody close to you. Say, neighbor, God loves you. And I do too. And if you love me as much as I love you, then nothing can break our love in two. Amen. Certainly it's good to see everyone that has come out um, on this morning to worship and praise our God on this morning. Isn't he so worthy this morning? I mean, been better to us than we can ever consider being to our very own selves. And I ask the question all the time, who wouldn't serve a God like this? I tell y'all, hear somebody say, like Campbell Soup, Sister Coffee, he just, un un good. He just get better every day. And we just like to say welcome. Um, we had a little technical difficulty this morning, but we got a makeshift this morning. So we want to welcome everybody that's watching us via live stream this morning. And we just pray that um, you enjoy the things that are going on via this, um, this worship service this morning. And we pray that you got your Bible at home with you and you're following along with us because you are just a part with us this morning as we are here. So the question I have now is, did anybody come to hear a word from the Lord? I, I believe you came to the right place. Let's go to the book of Ruth. The book of Ruth. And I'd like to thank everyone that prayed for me on last weekend as I got to go home. And I finally got to walk across that state. I wanted to step you know, across me, but you know what? I believe they was going to try and hold a brother diploma or something, you know, so I ain't, you know, I ain't want to test it, you know. But when I got out there in the parking lot, you know, I did it real quick. But, you know, I said, you know, I thank, I thank God. So I ask that you all pray for me as I... Um, choose uh, which institution will be my next stop um, as I further my education Amen. to be the best that I can be uh, for the people here. Amen. Ruth chapter 1. Ruth chapter 1. And we're going to begin at verse number 12. And I want to read to verse number 20. This is one of those books that you rarely hear about, like, you know, uh, Habakkuk and other books of that nature, but these, um, there are stories within the lacing and the linings of these books that are beneficial to our lives as Christians, if we would, but search them. Root chapter 1, beginning at verse number 12, you see, got it? Say, I got it. I got it. The Bible says, turn again, my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, if I should have an husband also tonight and shall also bear sons, would you tarry for them until they were grown? Would you stay for them for ha from having husbands? Nay, my daughters, for it grieveth me much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord is gone out against me. And they lifted up their voice and wept again, and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clave unto her. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back to her people and her gods. Return thou after thou sister-in-law. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whether thou goest, I will go. And whether thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and your God shall be my God. Where thou diest, will I die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me and more also, if aught but death part thee and me. That's where Selah got it from. It wasn't original. You remember, nothing but death can keep me from it. You know, that's where she got it from. <laughs> Verse number 18. And when she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her. So they two went until they came to Bethlehem, and it came to pass when they were come to Bethlehem, that all the city moved about them, and they said, Is this Naomi? And she said to them, Call me not Naomi, but call me Mara, for the Almighty hath dealt bitterly with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, dear Lord, be acceptable in thy sight. I want to do more so of a teaching this moment on the concept of favor. Favor. Sidebar, look over at somebody and say, God favors me. Today is a day that I get to share a message that has become 
for many ways to me the alma mater through which we live and move in life. And that is the favor of God, the favor of God. And if you know anything about the favor of God, you know that God's favor and God's grace over your life has nothing to do, number one, with your background, your past, or where you come from, or what others have to say about you. If God be for you, he is more than the whole world against you. So we believe in life, nothing just happens. Come on. Nothing happens by accident. All things are orchestrated in our lives by God. He puts us at the right place at the right time around the right people to receive what we need to get to the next place in life. That's important. And sometimes life as we're living right now can seem a little bit chaotic sometimes, can seem not to really make sense, can be painful and at times <coughs> can be a little bit uncertain. So it helps us to know, that ain't wrong y'all, so it helps us to know that God has some master plan that there is some method to the madness that we are going through in life. That ultimately, there's going to be some purpose even out of the painful situations that we go through in this life. There will be purpose. So I want to take a look at Ruth and how God orders their steps. And first of all, I want you to know, write this down, that she is a Moabite woman. She is a Moabite woman. In case you're not familiar with her, she is a Moabitess coming out of Moab, people who didn't recognize God as God. But because Bethlehem and Israel in particular were going through a famine, Naomi took her two sons and her husband, and they went down into Moab and met these two girls. We talk, and Ruth and Orpah, who married Naomi's two sons, you have to understand these characters. If you don't understand these characters, you won't understand the metaphor, what it means to you. Now, these two sons, these girls married, died. And Naomi's husband also died. And, and you got to look at how the three women became engulfed in grief and some kind of sadistic pain from losing their companions. They were engulfed in each other in their own tears and they were weeping because of what they were going through. Now, Orpah goes back to Moab because she can and she's released to go. Naomi said she's going to Bethlehem where she came from. She's wilted and she's withered. Ruth standing between Naomi representing where she wants to go and Oprah representing where she came from turns to Naomi and says, I'm going with you. Your God shall be my God and your people shall be my people. Where you lodge, I will lodge. And where you die, I will die. That's some dedication right there. Where you die, I'm going to die. Now, the cost of her decision is quite painful. Now, she is in Bethlehem. A Moabite woman is in Bethlehem. She is a minority woman there in Bethlehem. She is a woman who is considered to be a second-class citizen because she is not of Bethlehem, not a legitimate citizen of Bethlehem. She is impoverished, and she is also a widow. She has an economic issue as well as a spiritual issue, but she's willing to go through the adversity because she's been so impressed with Naomi and her God that she wants to be where Naomi is. Experiencing Naomi's God walking into the abundance that Naomi has to be possible because she's in Bethlehem. Bethlehem is translated to be the house of bread, the house of bread, yet she's starving for bread. Isn't it funny how you can be in the right place and still be in need? Isn't it funny how you can feel like, man, I'm right where I need to be. I'm in the zone. I'm finally here. And you are still lacking the things that you need in life. Isn't it funny how you can be in the right place, blessings flowing because of your situation, though, you are unable to enter the blessing because you are so held back by what you've already been through. She knew she was in the right place. And that was imperative for you to be able to know that God was working with her. Now, theologically, Naomi represents the nation of Israel. 
through her husband, typifies the situation they experienced from the wholesome worship of Jehovah God. And her two sons and the death of her two sons and the birthing of her two sons represent Israel dividing into two kingdoms. And death of her two sons is the end of an era where Israel divided into two kingdoms and the ending of the era is signified by Ruth making up in her mind to follow Naomi back home. Ruth following Naomi back home is a type of church whose umbilical cord from God comes from the rich soil of Judaism. Well, we have a Judeo-Christian society. There is a cord between Judaism and Christianity. Old Testament teaches us the identity of the personality of our God. So Ruth goes back with Naomi, representing the church, now coming into a covenant relationship with God through her association with this older woman named Naomi, who incidentally happens to be her mother-in-law. Now, when we look at Ruth then, we see that she is a metaphor for the church her life, and her struggles. Her acquisition of land becomes a picture or a template as it were for us today. Now, I, I've got you, uh, you, look, you look like preacher, where you going with this? Good, I'm, gl- I'm glad you're there, I'm glad you're there. Ruth now is coming into Bethlehem. She's gleaning over the corners of the field. There's a famine. The woman is hungry. She's gleaning. Gleaning is to to gather wheat. She's gathering whatever she can, wherever she can, over in the corners of the field. She happened up on Boaz's field. He is rich and has affluence and influence in his community. And and she she sees, sees her gleaning in the corner of the field. Catch me and go for it. Boaz is talking to women gleaning and looks over and says... Who's that over there in the field? They say, that's Ruth, the Moabitess. He said, this is what I want you to do. I want you, she'll be coming this way after a while. I want you to do this. When she follows this direction, I want you to leave some handfuls of what you have harvested. Just drop them on the ground for her to be able to find it. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. Here comes Ruth back round to forefront from obscurity to notoriety. Isn't it nice to be in the right, to be going in the right direction? I mean, you haven't got there yet, but thank God I'm moving in the right direction. You, you haven't gotten there. If, if, if we as a church, if we as Christians begin to move in the right direction, there are certain little signs that are indicative of the fact that you are moving in the right direction. Little signs such as this. When I look back over my shoulder and see where I have come from, I may not look successful to you, but when I realized that I came out of famine, when I realized that I had to struggle just to be able to survive, but I came out of it, I conquered it, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And and then she went from survival into a place that she's being sustained. And now she's coming into a place where she notices increase. Somebody say increase. Increase. All of a sudden she says, look at this extra wheat. Uh Where's all this coming from? Look at this extra wheat laying on the ground. I know they mean to leave all this behind. What Ruth doesn't know is that Boaz has had a conversation about her that she didn't hear. What Ruth did not know and what you do not know, child of God, is that when you are going through the tops and the turns of this life, is that you may not know how it's going to get worked out, but your big brother has already went to the father and he's had a conversation on your behalf. How did it work out? It wasn't because of you. It was because a man upstairs went to his daddy and had a conversation on your behalf. Now, now, somebody say release, release, release. Now, he's commanded a release of blessings on her behalf. She didn't even hear the conversation about her. But she's a recipient 
of something that he has said about her. That caused her to start receiving things that had been released for her that she didn't even know was coming her way. That, oh, Lord, we are here this morning, and if we were just in an attempt to follow God and to do his will, we'd be like Ruth, and we'd notice increase in our lives as well. Let me tell you, sometimes you may wonder why this can't happen, why that can't happen. you got to do self-inventory of your own life and see, am I doing what I'm supposed to do? Am I in line? Am I following the will and the precepts of God? Because let me tell you, God ain't going to bless no mess. And, and, and you can't live for the devil all during the week, dress up on Sunday morning and come out. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing his word. Sound like music. It, it don't work like that. You got to either be all in or not in at all. We didn't hear the conversation that was going on about us. But all of us know that we have been in some situations that we only got out of because of the favor yeah. yes, sir. of God. Yes, sir. So, 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 so we, we, don't, we don't know what has been said about us. We, we don't know how the blessing started, but we just noticed that as we attempted to walk with God, that there have been some things that just worked out that would have never worked out before as if somebody had just laid out some stuff for you. You know, when you was a child, you didn't have to worry about getting up and ironing your clothes and getting all that ready. When you got up, mama already had it laid out on the bed for you. It was already, everything was already creased and ironed, laid out for you. It was already prepared. So, and things just started coming unto her. And is there anybody who knows what it is to just stumble on blessings that you weren't even looking for? I mean, man, you turn, oops, upside my head. Here come another one. Like, man, where, where, did, where did that come from? I wasn't even looking for it, but God just decided to show up and provide something along the way. Who wouldn't serve? Well, let me tell you, man, sometimes what we're worrying about, God has already worked out. Well, you know, our, our issue is we're, told we're too quick to throw in the towel. We're too quick to say, well, you know, man, this thing ain't worked out as of yet. I might as well give up. There's no need in holding on. And what I, what I learned is that the darkest part of the night is just before dawn. It's just before dawn. We, we give up right before the dawn is just about to come. I want to tell y'all, you better keep on holding on. You better keep on holding to the unchanging hands of God. May not work out today or tomorrow, but keep on waking up and saying, thank you, Jesus. And certainly he'll provide for you. So going into the second chapter of Ruth, in the second chapter, all of a sudden, just walking alone, minding your business, and boom, here comes a blessing. And you're walking alone, boom, here comes another blessing. Boom, here comes a blessing. See, see they, had, they had already pulled up the wheat. She didn't have to pull it. It was just laying on the ground. All she had to do was pick up what had been laying on the ground. There are some things that God can bring into your life you ain't even got to work for. There are some things that God will bring into our life that we don't even earn or we don't even deserve. We're preaching, what is that? Everything. Because truth be told, we don't deserve anything from God. None of our goodness is good enough to deserve anything from God, but he does it simply because he loves us. Now, he said, he said this, I give you houses that you didn't build. He said, I give you vineyards that you didn't even grow. He said, I'll just let you stumble into some things. And, and all of a sudden, all you've got to do is to have enough faith to believe me for what I've already done in your life. Now, now the people who are responsive to that are people who have experienced it in their own life. There are people who are living in the book of Ruth right now that are just seeing some things. All the work 
has taken out of it. It was I was just there. It was just available to me. Oh, and you just were starting to see, man, I, I, I was just in the right place at the right time around the right person, and a door was open for me. I didn't even know that person's name, but apparently God had already stepped in that person's heart and made a way for me. Let me tell you, God will cause people that don't even know you to be a blessing for you. How many of y'all know this to be right? God will make people that don't even like you have to bless you. What do you mean, preach? The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. Do you even know your, your enemies got to be around for you to eat good? Come on now. Thou preparest a table before me. They sit in the table. Now, now. When it, when it happens like this, you have to understand because some watching, you may not understand the way that we worship. And you have to understand that when, when you see people crying or their hands lifted, you may say, well, isn't that interesting? Look, look at those people. They're, they're animated or they're just so emotional. You know why? That's nice. It's not that we're emotional. It's just that it's very difficult to be in a burning building. Know where the fire escape is and to sit right there in the fire. It's difficult to be in a burning building. Know where your escape is and to sit there like you don't know how to get out. It's very difficult to be at the end of your rope and something just drops on your plate out of nowhere just in the nick of time and you act like don't nothing happen. And if God hadn't done what he did, when he did it, how he did it, you don't know how you would be able to survive what you went through. <clears throat> Just when the enemy, God dropped blessings. God drops down blessings every day. Whether you recognize it or not, you might have been on your way saying, man, well, you know, I, God hadn't really blessed me as of late. I haven't really got anything big. I know you probably just, every day you're going out there looking in the mailbox. I, I done sent Peter Pop off all that money. He done sent me Miracle Spring Water. He done sent me prayer cloths. I done sent Benny Hinn this. I done sent him that man. Oh, I'm supposed to be in here. Oh, they told me I'm going out there in the mailbox every day. Where my $50,000? Where my $100,000? Looking for it. But let me tell you, when you are a child of God, you recognize that every day that you wake up, you are receiving blessings from God. Every day that you wake up and you put one foot out of the bed, it might pop just a little bit, but guess what? You're still able to get out of that bed, put pressure on that leg, put pressure on that leg. When you get ready to go forward, one foot goes in front of the other. You ain't got to have nobody to come and feed you. You ain't got to have nobody to bathe you. You ain't got to have nobody to drive you around or do for you. You are blessed. Blessed be the God who loves us daily with Benefits. Benefits. What benefits, preacher? Food on your table. Clothes on your back. Shoes on your feet. Blessings from the Lord. Blessings from the Lord. And even as Ruth said, because she responds to the beckoning of Boaz, comes along without half the work, she received all of that harvest, all of that that had been left by for her. And if she had pulled it, plucked it, cleaned it, and prepared it, it was just waiting around for her. And I, and I, I really want to talk to somebody this morning. Is there anybody who just had blessings to just fall down on you? I'm talking about, man, when sometimes you just got to get by yourself and say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, and your man, sometimes something happened, and you just got to say, ooh, man, it, it did so good, you just got, man, you a bad God, man, that's a, that's a bad man. Sometimes you just got to say things, sometimes you just can't contain it with all the wrong that you've done, with all the time that you know what was right, still did wrong, yet and still, he blesses you. New mercies you see every day of your life. Now, favor, favor, favor is what we call preferential treatment. Favor is a distinctive treatment whereby you have reached an elite status that you do not deserve. And the reason that people sometimes are upset when others get blessed is because favor ain't fair. 
Favor, what you say, preacher? Favor is not fair. And if you're taking, if you're taking notes, make sure you get that. Favor is not fair. God may be, but he's not fair. What do you mean, preacher? We don't deserve anything, but yet he gives us everything. How many of us actually think we deserve for God to wake us up this morning? We met all the marks. We did everything that was right and then some. No, that ain't the case. He just blessed us anyhow. Anyhow. Anyhow, let me tell you, man, and, and, and I know I'm looking at somebody right now that I know for sure, as of late, has been a recipient of the favor of God. Or oh, I'm looking at a man who has, been, as of late, been a recipient of the favor of God. I remember just a few weeks ago, we was praying for you, brother, and we was wondering what God was going to do about your situation. But man, now you're able to walk up in the house of God and tell God, thank you. Now you're able to walk up in the house of God, lift up your hands, open up your mouth and praise God for what he's done for you. Can't nobody tell you what God is not able to do and what he cannot do because you know that he'll reach way down. Come right to where you are and pick you right on up. Place your seat, your feet on a solid ground and establish your going. All of us in here, whether we know it or not, are favored. So you say right when people ask you how you're doing. And you say I'm blessed and I'm highly favored. I'm favored among God because he looked beyond my faults. And he met me at my need. Well, aren't you glad that when you decide to get yourself together, that God didn't just bring up all the stuff that you had already done? That he didn't say, okay, I'm 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 going to receive you, I'm going to take you in, but just look at all this stuff that you have, that you do. Look at where you've been. Look, look at what you've been involved in. Look at what you've done. He didn't do all that. But when you came, he remembered all of that no more. And he blesses you in spite of you. Favor, favor, favor. Nothing but favor over our life. And of course, if if, if we be honest about it, all of us have looked around at times and wondered, man, that's your favor. Oh, man, that's sure enough blessed. What I ain't doing. Well, what, what am I doing wrong? Why, why, why can't I get this? Or why can't I get that? Ruth didn't wonder where it was going to come from. God had already provided a way for her. Look at the obstacles that the woman went through. Going to a place where she would not be accepted. Going to a place where just by her being there, she would be considered a second class citizen. Oh, she's a Moabitess. She don't even worship our God. She, she ain't nobody. Who, who, who is she to us? But isn't it funny how oftentimes God will take the people that other folk don't think deserve to be blessed, that other folk don't think deserve to be a recipient of the goodness of God, and God will take them, put them right out there on front street just so other people can see God blessing them. Why does God do that? So God can see, hey, when you said no, I can still say yes. When you put a period, I can insert a comma because just because you say they're over and they're done with, they can't do anymore. When you give up, God say, I am just now getting started. Do not give up on God. Don't forget me where you left me because where you left me is not where I'm going to end up at. God got something in store for me. (coughs) The favor of God. And Ruth, Ruth, just started being blessed. Other folk didn't think it was fair, but she was just being blessed. And the Bible, the Bible said that Boaz had spoken to the reapers and said, just leave her handfuls on purpose. Isn't it funny how God put somebody in the right place to see what she needed? 
And without her even have to beg, put up the poor mouth or anything, God had already worked out the situation for her. He didn't just say leave her a little handful, leave her plenty on purpose. Leave her plenty on purpose. Let me tell you, we don't serve a substandard God. And whenever he does something, he does it. He don't do it halfway. He does it all the way. So all of us in here, as I've said, we are favored. The reason we are here right now is because we have been favored by God. The reason you were able to overcome the obstacles of life that have been brought to you thus far is because you were favored by God. You're favored. And everything that we go through in life is for a purpose. And it's for a reason. You look at even the man we talk about all the time, Job. Job was favored among God. But his situations didn't always seem to be favored. And we have to understand that we don't always understand the processes that God takes us through in life. We don't always understand, well, why did it have to be like this? Why did it have to be like that? Can you imagine some of us, if we were Ruth, why y'all had to throw it on the ground? Why you couldn't put it in the basket? Why you couldn't bring it to my house? We want God to bless us. But we want him to bless us according to our terms and our conditions. But if you just think about it, you can go ahead and thank God right now that he didn't give you what you wanted when you asked for it. Because the truth be told, if he gave us what we want when we asked for it, we wouldn't really appreciate God. You just got to think about it. It ain't nothing really in your life that was given to you that you really just appreciate. It's not until you've had to cry, work, and sweat over something that you really learn how to appreciate it. If I give you a Mustang, you'll go out there and do 150 down the road. But if you go out and purchase it yourself, man, you're going to take all the precautions. You're going to stop at all the stop signs. You're going to yield at all the yield signs because you got something that is invested in it. But Ruth, lo and behold, I ain't got nothing. But I admire your God. I can't, I can't go back to where I come from. But it's something about your God. I wonder, do the people around you, are they able to say the same thing that Ruth said about Naomi? I admire your God. It's just something about that God that you serve. How will they be able to say that unless you are living him out in your daily life? How else will they be able to say that unless you exemplify him in everything that you do? She said, man, you know what she said? Your God is going to be my God. Your people are going to be my people because apparently he has done a work in your life. And because she chose to follow that God, she just started receiving blessings from nowhere. I believe Ruth was actually the first one to think in her mind, man, he opened up the wonders of heaven. Pour you out a blessing to where you won't even have room enough to receive it. Paint a picture of that for you. You remember when Peter and them was out there on the lake fishing? Fished all night, didn't catch nothing. Next day, Jesus gets on the boat, tells them where to drop the net. Now they've caught so many fish. Y'all remember what they have to do? They had to yell out, hey, Cliff, y'all come over here and get some of these fish, man. We got too many. Hey, Charles, come, man, come down here and get some of these fish. They, had, they caught so much that they had to beckon to their partners to come in. That is what it looks like. God will bless us so profoundly. That we cannot keep it to ourselves, but you've got to go out and share it with somebody else. You feel it? You really think God blessed you just to bless you? He blesses us so that we, in turn, can be a blessing to somebody else. And, and, and it's not always what well, preacher you telling me. I got. Uh, it's not always a financial thing. You got time you can give. 
You got attention you can give. You got love that you can give. There are many ways that we can give. So he's freely given us all things. So we ought to be willing to give to one another. Because we've been favored that way. We were favored to come here this morning. To, and and man, as we've been going through all that we've been going through these past few months, I don't know about you, but it's refreshing for me to be here this morning. Amen. It's, it's refreshing. It, it does my heart good. It does my soul good. Everybody ain't here, but guess what? It's just good to see some of my brothers and sisters Amen. that have come out. That have come out this morning, despite what we're going through, you say, you know what, man, I got to go out because I already know Satan going to be waiting at my doorstep when I get home. So you know what? I got to go and get some so I can be ready for this joker when he does come. I want to remind y'all of something in case you've forgotten. God is good. He's not just good some of the time, but he's good all the time. Even in the middle of a pandemic. He's good. But preacher, how can you say he's good? Look at everything that's going on. Look at, it. Look at all the people that have lost their jobs. The people that have lost their lives. Look at all that's going on. How can you say he's good? Look in the mirror. Look in the mirror. Look, 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 look in the mirror. If, if you look at the newspaper right now and you look at the obituary column, I don't think your name going to be nowhere in there. I, I, I don't think your name will be anywhere in there. So you can say, in spite of what's happening, he's favored me. He's favored me. He's been good to me. Oh, you, you've been going to Walmart just like other people have been going to Walmart. You've been going to places where a lot of people are just like other people. Other people are getting sick and getting down. But God has sustained you. And I tell y'all, when we get over this thing, I believe one day we ought to just come here and just have a testimony service. Just to remind, just to tell somebody just how good God has been to us. Just to remind somebody of how God has brought us through and how God has sustained us. When we didn't even know how we was going to make it. People, people, even in our midst right now, over these past few months, been struggling. Man, I don't know how that light bill is going to get paid, but God is in your hand. Lord, Lord, I don't, know, I don't know where the next meal going to come from, but Lord, I put it in your hand. But guess what, man? Through all of that, you ain't missed not one meal. Matter of fact, two or three pounds been put on. Praise God. Amen. So it was true what David said. David said, I have been young. Now I've gotten older. You still the young girl the other day, so I ain't forgot about you. I was young, but not now I've experienced some things in my life. I've gotten older. Yes, sir. But throughout all of that time, not one time was there in my life where God did not provide for me. And can I tell y'all, we need not worry. We need not fret. Even if, by chance, God forbid, we have four more years of foolishness. Can I tell y'all, I just want to let, God is taking us some, through some stuff right now, y'all. It's a test of our faith. It's a test of our faith. We've been hollering, oh, we're people of faith. We love God, we're people of faith. Well, now that your faith is being put to the test. Are you still hollering out, I got faith, like you used to holler out, I got faith? But let me tell you, and, and I, as I see it now, the children, the children, people of God, during this time right now, it's where our voice ought to be the loudest. It's where we ought to be doing more than we've ever done before. Because folk are looking. Folk are searching. And while we've got our hands in our pockets, Hebrew Israelites, the nation of Islam, all of those people, they're out there. And because of the climate that we're living in right now with all the racial issues that we're going on, the stuff that they're talking sounds really convincing to our people. But we have to be the ones out there on the forefront. Letting people know about a man that hung on Calvary's cross, 
died for the sins of all mankind that we might inherit the right to eternal life. And that God did not come just to save the black man or just to save the white man, but God came to save everybody. He that believeth, whether you're red, yellow, pink, green, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. It's still true, y'all. The Bible is still right, even though people may use it for wrong. And that's the biggest argument right now. Well, you know, that, you know, man, they, they took the Bible and enslaved us. They took the Bible and they used it to oppress us during slavery. Well, anybody can take a good thing and use it for bad purposes. That doesn't mean that what they use is invalid or wrong. That just means that they were wrong. That's just like right now. Millions of people are standing in pulpits right now using the same Bible, but it's about a million different messages coming out of their mouth. How is that possible? Everybody can have the same truth, but everybody got their own way of thinking. Everybody got their own ideology, what I think and how everybody they go on. But I want to let y'all know the Bible is right. Amen. From Genesis to Revelation, you can depend on it. You can, I ain't worried about no lost books because if God would have wanted them to be included, guess what? He would have included them. Let me tell you, I don't, I don't, you, can, you can't get me to believe that God will leave us here not knowing in which direction that we're supposed to go. God would not leave us here. Man, I, if some books would have been lost, I believe God would have sent them down himself from heaven just so we could have what we needed to be able to make it into God. He wouldn't have did us like that. The Bible itself said, Many other wonders and signs did he do and perform in the midst of his disciples, but these were written that we might believe. These were written that we might believe. The Bible is right. And the Bible, the word of God, is what's going to judge us in the last day. When we stand before him, when is the last day preaching? I don't know. You're asking the wrong one. If I, if I told you, I'd have to repent. But we've been in them for a long time. You know, you hear people, oh, child, we in the last days. Oh, man, it was cold yesterday, hot today. Man, we're living in the last days. Oh, man, it's rumors and, and rumors of war. Man, we're living in the last days. I want to tell y'all something. Newsflash, we ain't just got to the last days. We've been in the last days now over 2,000 years. Since the day of Pentecost, we've been in the last days. And since we know not the day nor the hour when the Son of Man shall appear, why not prepare ourselves? Why not get ready? I marvel at even such a time as this during the pandemic when people are fretting and people are worried, when it seems like we ought to be getting closer to God than we've ever been. So many people are just drifting farther and farther away. Let me tell you, I know that's, and I know why, because they don't have a foundation. If you got a foundation in Christ, it'll anchor you through the troubled waters of this life. You'll have something that'll be able to hold you up and sustain you when you're going through it in this life. So I want to remind you this morning, your favorite, and to remember that even through troublesome times, I got favor with God. And as long as I have favor with God, can I tell you, I ain't worried about where it's coming from, Elder Denson. I just know it's coming from somewhere. Because of who my daddy is, because of who I am connected to, I'm going to have everything that I need. So my brother and my sister, if you're here today and you're not a member of the body of Christ, which is the church of Christ, you come by hearing the gospel. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10 and verse number 17, so then faith Coming by hearing, hearing by the word of God. After hearing, one must believe the same. After belief, one is to repent of their sins. What is repentance? Repentance is a change within my mind that produces a change within my action. After repentance, you confess with your mouth the sweetest name known to mortal tongue. Not Buddha, not Muhammad, but that Jesus is the son of the living God. After confession, you are willing to be baptized for the remission of your sin. Have your sins washed away, eradicated, done away with, never to come up before you in this life, neither the life that is to come. And the Lord himself 
would join you. One, one is awake. Acts chapter 2 and verse number 47, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord himself, not Peterson, the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. If you're here today and you're standing in the need of prayer, you have that opportunity today. Don't put off today for what you plan on doing tomorrow. But while you have this opportunity, why not come to Jesus now? Together we stand and sing the song of invitation.